Uh, hello everyone, uh, we are going to talk about an important topic today on uh, safety in uh, general safety in industries. So, first we will talk about uh, the safety accidents. Uh, basically, workplace accidents are both a loss as well as a pain for the people who are meeting with the accidents and uh, it is a loss for the company, for the people. And uh, Accidents are pain and basically it is told that it is no, it's not only to the person who is meeting with an accident, but uh, to the family, to the kith and kin and it is a, uh, a kind of a unfortunate, uh, uh, unplanned even that result into a kind of uh, injury uh, which is really painful. And uh, as per the Heinrich, uh, uh, the pioneer in modern safety philosophy, he has talked about, uh, he has even, uh, he has analyzed uh, some 75,000 accident cases and uh, what he has tried to prove here is 96 percent of the injuries are due to unsafe conditions and unsafe acts. So, uh, basically accidents are not caused, uh, they, uh, they do not just uh, cap happen, uh, it is basically accidents are caused and they are preventable also. So, why we say that accidents are preventable? Uh, basically by using the right method and the right controls and with the right PP, the accidents are preventable. Now, come talking about this picture, it is an activity where you know in a forklift uh, driver, uh, you can see that how he sits and uh, operates and uh, very near to that, uh, there is a person who is lifting the load, he does not know how to do, how to lift the load and uh, the forklift operator, he does not know what to do. And uh, you can see another person who is actually standing on the fork of the forklift, uh, which is actually forbidden, and he does not know the right way to do things. So, uh, one single mantra is that you know, know the SOP, standard operating procedures, and you will not have any accidents. And here in this case, uh, for a glass pile, when it starts, you know, leaning, it is not a right way to go there and try to stop it. So, Basically, we need to know the risk for need to have uh, no accidents and the personal protective equipment for each and every operations when it is defined and people are adhered to, it actually protects the people from incidents. Now, this slides, I am trying to talk about you know few of the jobs which requires a good amount of training and skill. So, in any kind of uh, avo uh, avoiding any kind of an incidence, uh, you require extensive training and uh, the right skill set. So, the question what we need to ask is whether are we trained to do a job uh, in order to do it safe. So, now I would like to invite your attention on what is called as hazard and the risk. Basically, hazard is a source of situation or act with the potential for harm in terms of human injury or ill health or a combination of this. And risk is basically a likelihood of an occurrence of an hazardous event or exposure. Uh, basically, it is an exposure to the hazard is known as risk. Now, this is a very common picture, uh, a, a dog uh, which has got an aggressive behavior. Uh, uh, we can say that, you know, there are several hazards uh, out of this dog, offensive order, parasites, sharp teeth. Uh, sharp clothes, uncontrolled movements, each and every hazard, hazardous behavior, you can relate it to a kind of a risk. In the next picture, uh, you know, it can cause injury to public, uh, then the bad order, uh, it can uh, nasal irritation. So, uh, it is a sharp teeth, it can result into kind of bites and infection. So, these are all the risk associated with that. So, it is a kind of a you know relating hazards and risk. Then basically when it comes to types of hazards, we have mechanical hazards, fire hazards, electrical hazards, chemical hazards and physical hazards. Uh, I have a video uh, which will be played uh, just after this slide to give you a demonstration of what are the different kinds of hazards that result into kind of risk.
Now coming to mechanical hazards, see situations with potential trapping between rotating parts, then um, uh, situations with potential trapping between parts having to and from motion, then situations with potential trapping between parts moving up and down. These are all you know basic uh, mechanical hazards. You can see in the picture uh, you know different rolling equipments, rotating equipments and moving equipments which can result into exposure of human being in the vicinity of these equipments can cause uh, uh, risk. So these are all another uh, examples where you know rotating parts, conveys, all those things. Uh, then this is drilling machines, uh, cutting saw, uh, wherever there is a movement, sharp edges, all these poses mechanical hazards. And uh, uh, this cleaning uh, when the cycle is on, when the equipment is working, when you try to clean the equipment, it is a mechanical hazard. Adjusting and repairing during when the cycle is on and uh, cleaning during cycle is on. Uh, I have a video on machinery safety which will be played uh, after this slide. Uh, which will give you a clear picture of uh, the mechanical hazards. Now coming to fire hazards, uh, this fire triangle is pretty famous and it has got three parts uh, that is the oxygen which actually helps a fire and heat source which is essential for the fire to happen and fuel that will sustain the fire. So uh, the, the basic uh, you know fire hazards are whenever any kind of uh, fire happens there should be the exit should be wide open and a cleaner and uh, safer workshop uh, should be available and there should not be any kind of an open containers with flammable material that all those things poses uh, fire hazards. Now electrical hazards, it is uh, unearthed machineries, uh, damaged uh, or poorly insulated wires and broken switches all those things causes electrical hazards and uh, here are few pictures uh, which shows uh, uh, you know main power controls are blocked with trolleys, uh, very difficult to access, operating equipment with damaged wires, uh, uh, see you, any, any equipment which is open and uh, the live wire is in open condition, all those things poses great hazard in terms of electrical safety. So electrical hazards, one important aspect is arc flash hazard also. I have a video on different uh, uh, you know situations where this arc flash has occurred and uh, is an important electrical hazard. And coming to chemical hazards, chemical or acid splash, then storing incompatible chemicals together that can create a hazard and usage of container belonging to a different chemicals, all these things are chemical hazards. Uh, you can see chemical hazards arises from keeping the chemicals unident unidentified, open and allow it to spill and do not clean it. So uh, chemicals are stored without any kind of an identification labeling, all those things are chemical hazards. Now the next set of hazards are physical hazards, there is a range of physical hazards uh, starting with ergonomical hazard, 
illumination hazard, you have dust fumes and mist, noise is another important hazard, vibration, radiation, trips and falls. All these hazards uh, in a way or another uh, form result into kind of uh, personal injury. Now, ergonomics, what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is the science and practice of designing jobs and workplace to match the capabilities and limitations of the human body. If that is not been done and any kind of an awkward position, posture, uh, movement is there, that will result into something called as musculoskeletal disorders. So, uh, this work, uh, work related musculoskeletal disorders uh, results from awkward postures, high hand force, repetitive motions and movement and heavy and frequent awkward lifting and uh, these kind of injuries that is resulting out of this uh, depends on uh, duration, frequency and intensity and combina combination of risk factors. And uh, you can see some few pictures where you know hand overhead and elbows above shoulders, these are all clear risky situations related to awkward posture and bend more than 30 degrees of your uh, spinal column, it is an awkward posture. And then uh, these are all uh, neck bend and squatting and kneeling, all these things are awkward posture in the workplace. And lifting of heavy tools or heavy loads, that is another awkward posture. And uh, the extension, ulnar deviation, flexion, the way in which uh, the palm, the hand is being uh, uh, twisted, this also uh, gives you a awkward posture and thereby the musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, I have a video on ergonomics hazards, beautifully explains which are all the awkward positions and postures that uh, give rise to this ergonomic risk. Now, illumination hazard, the picture itself is very clear. You need to have ample good amount of lighting and some required levels as per the IS standards like you know in, if it is a normal workplace, it should be 65 lux is the minimum requirement of uh, illumination and uh, if it is not there then it poses another hazard resulting into many kind of an accident. Noise, anything beyond 85 decibels uh, time weighted average threshold limit value is considered to be uh, uh, giving rise to something called as noise induced hearing loss which is an occupational disease. So, always we need to have a control on noise, high noise is always hazardous. Vibration is another hazard, vibration white finger is another result of uh, uh, exposure to uh, heavy vibration. And uh, radiation, uh, when it uh, comes to welding operation, gas cutting operation, lot of uh, radiations people are exposed, exposed to, which is another hazard. Now, slip strips uh, is a very common hazard uh, in terms of people are getting into accidents in uh, industry setup uh, because of oil, maybe it is a oil spill or poorly designed trolley stairs or projected particles in gangways. And open pits is another uh, potential danger and uh, damaged uh, hand tools and flying particles, all those things uh, possess uh, slips and trips. And uh, I have a video on uh, slip and fall hazard which will clearly give you an idea about uh, which are all the different kinds of situations that can give rise to slip, trip and fall uh, injuries. Now coming to uh, personal protective equipment uh, which can actually minimize the risk, it is it, in place, it is not uh, eliminating the risk but gives uh, uh, a control on uh, minimizing the risk. Different types of PPE are uh, we have uh, head protection, eye protection, ear protection, respiratory protection, hand protection, foot protection and height protection PPEs are available in the market. Now we can see head protection, the way the helmet is worn, it is very important that helmet is worn properly with the chin strap, otherwise you know it will not give the protection at the time of uh, injury. Uh, so, helmet has got the hard shell, then uh, the peak, uh, the adjustable nape strap, then chin strap, all those things are available. Now, coming to hearing protection, we have ear plugs, what is uh, there in the picture as well as ear muff. So, there is something called as noise reduction ratio. So, that is indicated on the ear plugs and ear muffs. So, based on the uh, risk available in the shop floor, uh, the kind of noise what we have, the intensity of noise what we have. We need to select uh, whether we need uh, protection with earring plug, uh, ear plugs or uh, ear muff and it has to be adequately used. 
then uh, this is the way it has to be worn uh, the ear plugs uh, we can see several people they just place it uh, in the ear uh, they will not it actually plug it uh, which will not give any kind of protection so i am just demonstrating what is the right way of wearing an ear plug so you have to actually in the picture uh, as in the picture you have to squeeze uh, the ear plug and then um, press it and then uh, the shape what it is like uh, what you are seeing in the picture and then uh, hold the ear pinne like this with the other hand and then with the hand in uh, you are having the ear plug just insert it the ear plug and then uh, just plug it so this is the way it has to be worn uh, so then then only it will give uh, correct uh, protection now coming to eye protection uh, it is basically required to protect eye from the flying particles uh, dust uh, uh, particles like that and uh, uh, welding uh, at the time of doing welding or gas cutting is also eye protection is very very important so different kinds of goggles are available which should be confirming to IS standard or EN norms and then it has to be used uh, uh, a clean uh, see through goggles to be used then uh, we have uh, eye protection specified uh, uh, for welding and gas cutting you need to use uh, what it is given in the picture and then respiratory protection is another important thing because uh, almost 90 percent of the contaminants get into the body uh, uh, with uh, with respiratory uh, root so it is very important in we are in an area where there are a lot of exposure to dust mist uh, chemicals respiratory protection based on the hazards available in that area need to be selected and uh, we need to be protected then foot protection uh, safety shoes uh, with uh, the steel uh, toe uh, uh, available is very very important and then hand protection cut resistant gloves uh, so there are different types of gloves available based on uh, the hazard what you have chemical resistant gloves are available cut resistant gloves are available mechanical resistant gloves are available so based on the risk available we need to select the right uh, kind of protection and use hand protection is very very important then basically say no to you know finger injuries uh, 